Welcome to Video Friends. Appreciate you joining with us today. We are <clears throat> again at the uh, very close to the, on the bank of the Chautauqua River. <clears throat> the river was kind of made famous by uh, Burt Reynolds and a group from Hollywood that made a film here back in the early 70s, 73 or 4, somewhere in there. And uh, uh, really made a lot of people uh, come to this river uh, to canoe it and kayak it and raft it. Uh, it's a beautiful river, and it is part of the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act uh, of our national uh, um, protection. And so it's, it's remained like it is all these years, and unless Congress changes it, <clears throat> it will be this for many, many years to come. And I am thankful for the <clears throat> national forests that we have and the, uh, and the rivers that we have. Uh, to keep them and not to be uh, marred by mankind. I think it's a good thing. We may learn better ways to use the land as time goes on. Uh, I think for this time and generation, it's been a very positive thing altogether for the national forest and the rivers and various monuments that we have uh, to be protected and so that they're not destroyed by men uh, who would just simply want to make merchandise of them, <clears throat> but at the same time destroying them. And it's, uh, I know it's a big controversial thing, and, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we do appreciate these forests and these rivers that we have about us. Well, today we're in John chapter 3 and verse number 16. Uh, we read here maybe one of the greatest scriptures in all the Bible, maybe one of the most simplex scriptures in all the Bible, and yet, a, a scripture that shows us the depth of the heart of God Almighty. Uh, it is an amazing scripture, uh, one that probably every Sunday school kid should know and be taught, and uh, one that uh, I think that everybody can remember. Uh, the Bible says right here in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I mean, that is a great verse right there in and of itself. If you had no more of the Bible than John 3, 16, you, you'd be still greatly blessed. You'd be greatly blessed. Uh, and Jesus makes a mountaintop uh, 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 scripture right here when he, when he states what he stated in John chapter 3. And verse 16, for God so loved the world, and it's, it's greater than I can comprehend, the love of God. God so loved the world. That's why he did what he did. Why the, uh, he loved the world. And we read many illustrations in the Bible uh, of a man that gives himself for something that he loves, and of men who give what they have to those that they love. And men who give what they have or can get uh, for the objects or something that they really want. Well, right here is probably the greatest truth of love that we have known in the entire universe. For God so loved the world, uh, and that's mankind. Uh, there's a note here in my Bible that says mankind. It's so true. Uh, the cosmos uh, Mankind, that's what it means, the world, that's what that word is. And the Greek is cosmos, and it means mankind. Um, and that uh, uh, God so loved mankind and the world, he so loved us, uh, <clears throat> uh, that he would do what he's about to do, what Jesus had come to do. And as we read this, I marvel at it. And I think of mankind, and I look on the news almost every day, and I see the wickedness and the terribleness of man toward his fellow man upon the earth. And, and I wonder, uh, how could this be? You got to read here in the Bible, God so loved the world. Uh, I read in history past of the wars they had, the blood that was shed, uh, how that the Romans nailed uh, Christians to crosses and, and put people to death on crosses and uh, how Nero had them burnt in his gardens and uh, the gladiators would come and destroy them and they'd be fed to lions in those days. Uh, the beheading of many people. I read even before those times, uh, not even the 
to mention the persecution upon the Christians, how that uh, many rulers and leaders of the world uh, killed many, many people just to make sure they knew who the who the leader was, and uh, and uh, and I and you read in the news all all every day of brutality of people who have murdered other people, people who have stabbed other people. Uh, we read uh, of people who uh, abduct little children and make sex slaves out of them in our day and sell them off to a uh, uh, sex uh, uh, people who sell them out and sell their bodies out uh, to make money off of them. We read of people who stab, kill, and torture other people. Uh, we read these things. One of Daniel Boone's sons was killed in the early exploration days of Kentucky, and he was tortured by the Indians before he was uh, before he died. And he found his corpse later and realized what they had done to him. Well, uh, you would wonder, uh, how can people do these things to others? But they do. We read of people so... Uh, so desirous of money that they steal, they cheat, they connive, they lie, they rob from you and from I, and uh, they do anything. They don't care what they do as long as they get our money. Uh, uh, we read these kinds of things. We read of people who are bitter and hateful and don't love anybody, care about nobody but themselves. And, uh, and you think, what a world. We're around some people who know no good thing, can speak no good thing, can only curse and swear and uh, say bad and evil things. And we wonder, who could love them? Who could love them? We look at mankind uh, in this light and see his sinful condition, and we, we wonder, uh, how could anybody love them? But we read here in this verse right here in John chapter three sixteen, For God so loved... Mankind, you could say that instead of the word world. For God so loved mankind. Uh, he loved man greatly. Uh, from the first man Adam to the last man Adam that shall ever live. It's not God's desire that people should live on this earth and die and go to a devil's hell. It's not his will that that should happen. He said it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, there's enough saving grace in Jesus Christ to save every person that's ever walked on this planet and ever shall walk upon it. And I think His grace also forgives um, all the children who have died before whatever the age might be, that God would hold them accountable and uh, to know right from wrong. And uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing that God has this great love within Him. But why would we not think that? He is a great God. He is a mighty God. And he is the God of love. And uh, lots of times, many times, I've often thought, oh, I've got to do this. I don't want God to, uh, uh, to, uh, to whoop me. And truthfully, I do not want him to chasten me. I do not want him to have to deal with me uh, because I am wrong and rebellious and won't get right. But, you know, my friends, I've come to know and to realize that God loves me and that he puts up with a lot. He puts up with a lot up with a lot from a lot of people and uh, because he loves us and he gave himself upon the cross for our sins. Well, it's an amazing thing we read about the love of God. And uh, remember, uh, God's not just a mean old man uh, with a ball bat ready to knock us down when we sin, when we do wrong. Uh, that's not the true nature of God at all. He does judge. He does chasten. And he, he does uh, punish. Yes, he does. But that's not his heart. That's not his real intent. That's not a true picture of him to think of someone just waiting for us to get out of line, to pull us aside and uh, jump on to us uh, and uh, set us straight. Not, uh, that's not the true picture of God. Yet the true picture of God is one who loves mankind and wants him to be saved and doesn't wish to chase him, doesn't wish to... Uh, uh, jump on to him, who is rich in mercy, who is great in mercy, who delights in forgiveness. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing to think about a God, and our God is that way, uh, to think that he is that kind of a being and that kind of a person. We read stories of so-called the ancient go gods of the Greeks and so forth, and 
uh, they're, they're nothing but fables. They're nothing but man-made stories is all they are. And they picture God's kind of like that. Who one day they're glad, one day they're sad, one day they like man, one day they don't. Well, uh, that's man-made fables and fiction about gods. That's all that is. But right here we read some very true words about God. And this that we know about God, and the Bible tells us elsewhere as well, that God is love. And uh, right here we read that for God so loved the world. He is a God of love. And some religions of the world today, they teach about a God who is not love. They teach about a God who uh, uh, is going to deal with you and a God who hates you and a God who is going to dump his wrath upon you if you don't do what he says. And, and perhaps uh, that these earthly guys who promote that will use their sword upon your neck if you don't do what their religion teaches to do. Well, that's a very misconstrued concept of God that they teach and a very, uh, very, very crazy thoughts as well. But here read in the Bible some words that astonish us. In the midst of a world that's so vile and so wicked and so corrupt, we read still in the Bible, for God so loved the world. Then we read here as well about him uh, that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him. Again, we have a great a summarization of all the Bible right here in verse 16. His great love, his great gift to do something about this was to give his only begotten son. And he did. He gave him. And we know what he gave him to do. He gave him to die upon the cross for our sins and to uh, pay our sin debt that we could never pay. Uh, what, a, what a gift that he gave. What a gift that he gave. I marvel at to this day how the Almighty God would do that. But his love was so great that he did do that. And we marvel at that. And we, we greatly marvel at that. And uh, I've heard different stories of men who gave great prices for someone they loved, for somebody they loved. And, uh, and I marvel at that, uh, that they would have that much love within them. But my friends, uh, that is the God that we serve. That, in verse 16, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And... Uh, and so uh, uh, the word perish uh, in, the New, in the New Testament uh, uh, is not uh, it's the lost condition of, of, the, of the every non-believer. And where they're going to have, where they're going to go to, uh, it means marred, that they should not be marred, they should not perish, but have everlasting life. And uh, uh, God doesn't want us to die and go to hell. And I know there's people laugh about the ideal of hell, and they've been so brainwashed, they'll tell you, well, God wouldn't do that. Well, the Bible tells us very plainly uh, that there is a, a hell to be shunned and a heaven to be gained. And Jesus spoke of hell uh, repeatedly to warn men about hell and to avoid the pits of hell. And, uh, and right here, this word perish, that's what he's meaning, that, that he should not perish, to perish into hell. When I think about this word perish, I always think about uh, a man on the boat in the midst of an ocean, in the midst of a raging sea, and he's, and he's swept off the ship, and uh, he goes down into the deep sea, and the waves come above his head, and he's instantly uh, uh, swallowed up by the sea. He perishes in the sea, and, uh, and uh, no hope for him as far as his physical life is. It's over. It's done. And uh, I, my mind goes thinking about people upon whom have died in the wars, to whom, to whom bombs have landed on. The bombs so explosive and did so much damage uh, that the people that were in the way of the bombs uh, perished and, uh, and died because of it. I think about the uh, 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 people who've been trapped in forest fires, and some firefighters who have died fighting fires, who perished uh, fighting fires. Uh, in, in this land. Uh, they, they, their lives were snuffed out, their physical lives. Uh, I, read, I read about those stories. And right here, he's not just talking about the physical, but he's talking about the eternal soul of man. And he goes on to say, but have everlasting life. Why perish? 
when you can have everlasting life in Jesus Christ? Why be swept out in the sea of forever and when you could be on the ship with Jesus Christ? Why perish in a bomb when you could be in the great shelter of Jesus Christ? Why be burned in a fire forever and ever out of existence when you could be in a nice place not ever touched by flame with the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, my friends, may God help us to do so. Believe upon Jesus Christ. Call upon Him, and He'll save your soul for all time and eternity.